Now, first things first, then we are going viral. Brown's defensive end Miles Garrett this recently time. worked out at an MMA gym. On Instagram, Garrett said he loves, quote, finding new ways to exceed my limits physically and mentally. See, you ever try something like this? I have, man. I've almost tried everything. And what I like about doing stuff like this is when you get in tough spots in the game, you can go to that spot mentally where you were when you're doing all this training. And then you look at your opposition and be like, he didn't do this. He didn't do this type of training. He didn't pay the price. I know I got more in it than him, so I love it. He's going to be one of my favorites. You're going to see plenty of videos of him on this show, 20 sacks, Miles, this year. And, he, man, got the talent for it. Was a phenom at A&M. Uh, one of the best recruits they had gotten in a generation there. And you now he's it's going to be harder to double team him when you have Sheldon Richardson, when you've yes. got Olivier Vernon, when you got Larry Ogunjobi. And the, the cardio stuff that the boxing and MMA training does for you, and those three-minute rounds of boxing, five-minute right. rounds of MMA, yeah. and those feel like hours. So this is great. This is awesome. All right, time for stories to start your morning. Are you boxed, Yesterday, Jenna? Yesterday. I think Jenna would be good at it. No, I don't want to build too much of my upper body. Oh, you oh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. okay. Uh, yesterday, Tiger Woods, that's honesty right there for you. Tiger Woods struggled in round nice one, nice one, one of the lies. Open Championship in Northern Ireland. He finished seven over his worst opening round in 21 starts at the Open. Today, Tiger is two under through 10 holes. See, can Tiger get back into this? Well, a lot better weather today. You would think that the cut line's probably gonna be around plus two. Right now, he's a few shots off of that. Tiger Woods, you'll see him struggle now. We should just get used to this. If the weather, if it's raining, if it's cold, because we can't forget, he's the only golfer ever on tour to have a fuse back. And typically, underneath the fusion and above the fusion, those discs, you still have problems with them. And that's what we saw yesterday. His body was not comfortable on the golf course. And he winced on his very first shot of the day. He was able to hold on to the rope through the first five holes, grinding out pars, and then it all went askew for him. He had a, a hole that people were driving the green, the sixth hole, he ends up bogeying. That follows that up with a double, and it just got away from him yesterday. He's gonna have to grind really hard today to find a way to even make it to the weekend. All right, yesterday, Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh had some strong words for former Ohio State coach Urban Meyer, saying, quote, Urban Meyer's had a winning record, really phenomenal record everywhere he's been, but also controversy follows everywhere he's been. What did you make of this, CC? Well, it's not true. He's been to four places. He originally started coaching at Bowling Green, had no problems there, then went to Utah, did nothing but win in both places, went to Florida, big university, 45,000 students competitive there in the SEC, turned that program around to their most successful tenure that they've ever had under a coach. Did they have some things off the field? Yes. And he went to Ohio State. Every coach that's coached at Ohio State the last 40 years has had things. That the greatest coach we had, Woody Hayes, fired. Why? Because he punched someone. Big <laughs> programs come with big issues and big problems. Well, let me tell you what the problem is in Michigan. They not winning. All right? My man Urban Meyer has won wherever he's been. Bowling Green, he won. Utah won. Florida won national championships. And at the Ohio State won four times he faced Harbaugh beat him four times, too. So, yes, there was some controversy in the last two spots, but he didn't leave Ohio State because of controversy. It was health-related, and that's also the reason why he left the University of Florida. Listen, Harbaugh, you're my guy. Zip it on this. Take the gift that is Urban Meyer's retirement and try to go take control of the Big Ten. There ain't no like, gift, Ryan. They ain't no gift. Okay, well, he, listen. It's not Urban who's, who has as good of a coaching resume as almost anyone in the history of the sport. Tell me like, the last time when Ohio State lost, man. Tell me the last time they had a bad coach. Okay. Tell I, me. Uh, it's, ah. it's been a long time. Oh, okay. Who was the guy after Trestle? Isn't that Wasn't a song? Great. It's been a long time. Um, it's been a long time, time since Michigan beat us. Okay, that's, I know. I know. Yesterday. See, Arbaugh, that's why you should have zipped it. Yesterday, Kevin Durant was on the gram posting pictures of his rehab from his torn Achilles. Check him out shooting some hoops in the pool. See, what's going to be the hardest thing for KD in this recovery process? Just being patient. He's played at such a high level for a long time, but being patient, realizing that this is one of the most tedious injuries, the most tedious processes that he would ever go through. But I've been trying to tell the audience that cutting-edge medicine, technology, 
The recovery is a lot faster than ever before. The exercises they have the athletes doing, getting them up and moving. You don't have the atrophy. You don't have the cast. You don't have it immobilized for a long period of time. So he's in a walking boot. He's out getting movement. He's out doing things in the pool, non-weight bearing things. Also, still working on that jump shot. I'm excited to see Kevin Durant because I believe that there's greatness right on the other side of this and Kevin Durant is going to reach out and grab it. First really believes he's going to be back this year. It would be it would be an unbelievable infusion in what should be the most wide open NBA season we've had in 15 years if around the All-Star break all of a sudden the Nets add Kevin Durant which your timeline says and I would listen I was in your office listening to you talk to that doctor said hey man Vince Wilfork came back in six months yeah KD can come back in eight at so, 350 right and now Vince Wilfork's not jumping but still six months for him so we'll see I if I'm rooting for KD in this regard all injuries stink the way he got injured is about as bad as it gets given everything that went into it so I'm hoping he's back as soon as possible all right Kyrie Irving has moved from Boston to Brooklyn. Last season, he had his best statistical season, but the Celtics were bounced in his second round. Kyrie was blamed for a lot of the team's issues. Team chemistry, team leadership, ball movement, the relationship with Brad Stevens. But Danny Ainge says, quote, I feel like the Kyrie bashing is unfair. Nick, do you agree with Danny Ainge? I, to a degree, I agree with him, but I find this really interesting because... A lot of the people around Boston, I've heard Chris Mannix talk about this, I've heard Bill Simmons talk about this, people that are in the media but have their biggest connection to the Celtics. What they're saying is the worst Kyrie stories haven't even come out yet. Like seem, people seem to be waiting on the long form, be it Jackie McMullen or someone else, to write the autopsy of what happened there. And Danny Ainge is pushing back. Danny Ainge was saying we had issues that weren't just Kyrie, and Kyrie's gone now. So you could just say, man, he was a bomb that went off in our locker room, leak those things, talk about those things. Now we're fine. Right. And that makes not only his hands clean, but his coach's hands clean. When he says Kyrie wasn't the only issue, well, that then puts more of a finer point on the failings last year of Brad Stevens, mm -hmm. the failings of Danny Ainge as far as recognizing that Terry Rozier was going to be very unhappy in his role, recognizing the potential issues in, the, in that locker room. So I'll take Danny's word on this, but that does mean Boston has some other work to do organizationally to make sure something like this doesn't happen again, even though now Kyrie's gone. Well, first things first, Danny Ainge cannot have a press conference and say that Kyrie Irving was the problem. For one, Kyrie and his agent and all those associated with that agency, they would steer clear of Danny Ainge and Boston throughout their career. If he wants to commit professional suicide, that's what a general manager does. That's why general managers, you won't hear. You will not hear Sam Presti for OKC say anything negative about Russ. Never said anything about KD. Never said anything about Harden. This is a, a, a small window uh, of people that are in this profession. A, really good a small pool of people. So, no, he's not going to do it. And Danny Ainge, to me, is not a guy just going to blatantly just lie. Because after looking back on it, they've studied the roster, they studied the whole situation, and they realized himself that I didn't do what was best. I didn't scout our team. Because I know last year when Terry Rozier was starting, they told him, you are good enough to be a starter in this league. Well, you know Kyrie's not coming back. Is Terry Rozier still on that team? No. Oh, okay, so they lied to him. Because Kyrie was leaving, they could have kept him and made him the starting they point could, they guard. They could have kept him. Instead, Charlotte gave him $19 million a year. Gordon Hayward. There's no way that they told him the truth. They pumped all those minutes into Gordon Hayward. He shouldn't have been out there on the team. And Brad Stevens ultimately is the coach who I believe is in control. He did not do the best job with the most talented basketball team that he has ever coached. So for me, you need to be able to spread this around. I don't care what stories come out about Kyrie? Because typically when someone leaves, ultimately there are stuff that comes out. Every locker room, there's stuff. Kawhi talked about him and Kyle Lowry. Hey, man, remember we had some stuff happen yeah. that didn't come out. We had um, my man from Golden David State, West. 
David West said here, man, it was stuff in Golden State that we squashed. We didn't let it get out to the public. So, yeah, there's stories out there, but there are people that are responsible, and they should share in that blame. Nick, you said there's other work that has to be done. It wasn't just Kyrie. What other work has to be done? Who has to step up this year? Who, who really needs to take the reins and step up besides, obviously, Kemba? Well, listen, this the, the work that needs to be done might be work that isn't going to be done this year. As far as, as, far as who needs to step up this season, yes, Kemba, Jason Tatum going to need to try on defense. Kind of took a year off defensively last year and spent that year instead taking terrible long twos, like contested twos. Jalen Brown needs to recognize his route to becoming the player that he can be is not the route of being a 22-point-per-game guy. It's the route of being a great defensive player who can hit corner threes and be a decent fourth option on a team. But holistically, big picture, it is about the coach to a degree. Our friend Chris Mannix mentioned him again. I remember he sat here on the show and said, is there any player in the league you would trade Brad Stevens for? That was the talk of Stevens after Isaiah Thomas uh, led team goes to the conference finals and then a bunch of kids go to the conference finals with Hayward injured, with Kyrie injured. Kyrie injured. Different types of coaches in this league. One guy who I think does not get enough respect, Chris, Eric Spolstra. Mm -hmm. Spolstra's shown us, give me a super team. I will get the most out of them. Give me a bunch of guys, and I will have them grinding alive for the playoffs late. We know Stevens can do the latter. Can he do the former? Because if you can't, then you have a very limited ceiling in this league. Because you can't win without the superstars. Your whole goal is to get the superstars. Yeah, I think Brad's a good coach. Yes. I'm not going to say that he's one of the better coaches in the league because I still need to see more, especially the way these teams differed in the last couple years. But what I need to is I need to see a buy-in from the players. These younger players, outside of Kimba, these younger players, two years ago, there was a buy-in. I saw that in the playoffs. I saw them sacrificing. So for me, Danny Ainge and Brad Stevens got to be able to sell to this team I'm going to come up with what's best for you, and I want you to perform that role because I believe that's when Brad is at his best. When he gives a kid a role, the guy thrives in that role, then you build off of that. And Gordon Hayward has to be more athletic in year number three, all right, there in Boston than he has been, than he was last year. And just real quick, for those young players, we shouldn't discount the fact they were parts of trade rumors as well. We gave the Lakers young players a bit of a pass. Like, oh, man, the Anthony Davis stuff killed them. They'd been here, and they could be traded for Anthony Davis for two years. Now, Kyrie's gone. They, well, you know who their team is. They should know they were going to be there moving forward. Maybe that'll give them a little right. peace moving into next year. All right, let's take a break. Coming up, does Aaron Rodgers finally have the defense to contend for another Super Bowl? Talk about that next on First Things First. That's what the world needs, man.